Do you believe that Fort Bragg is far removed from the day-to-day -day lives of the people of Fayetteville? Well, in the early days of the Post, many here thought just that. My name is Brian, and I am the head of the local and state department here at the Cumberland County Public Library. In this series of videos celebrating Heroes Homecoming, we will be talking to Bruce Dawes, director of the Fayetteville History Museum, about the history of Fort Bragg. In these series of videos, Bruce will be discussing how Fort Bragg grew from a temporary military base to an integral part of the community. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Fort Bragg, which was Camp Bragg when it was established. Uh, World War I, uh, pre-World War II, and the civilian community uh, as it was affected by the military, and then World War II. So we are a military city. When you talk about Fayetteville, you are talking about a military city. When I have young children on tours or any kind of history program, I like to ask the question, how many of you have a parent in the military? many hands go up. And then I ask them to keep their hands up and I say, how many of you know someone in the military? At that point, all hands go up. Speaking and defining our character as a military community. And so did, so how did all of that come about? We've got to go back to World War I to have an understanding of how that took place. And maybe even a little bit before, because with the amount of volunteer militia in Fayetteville during an early period in our history, dating back to George Washington's administration, one half, the eastern half of North Carolina was referred to as the Fayetteville Brigade. So we always had that military spirit. So in 1916, the Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry here in Fayetteville was mobilized for the border dispute of 1916 and remained down there uh, for just under a year. They came back to Fayetteville and they were not released from their federal military status until they were mobilized in the First World War in 1917. So most of our Cumberland County soldiers were either assigned to the 30th Division, which was known as the Old Hickory for Andrew Jackson, or the 81st Division, which was the Wildcat Division. And so we had a tremendous amount of soldiers, white and black, that served all during World War I from 1917 until 1918. In 1918, while the war was still going on, Camp Bragg is established. So Camp Bragg was a field artillery training post, and a lot of people can only think of Fort Bragg today in terms of home of the Airborne and home of Special Forces and all these other elite units, the 82nd, which is the Guard of Honor, but actually it got its start as a field artillery training post. And when they scouted out different areas to establish a camp for field artillery training, they were just thrilled by the sand hills located out of Fort Bragg. It was an ideal environment to set up field artillery training. So Camp Bragg gets its start as a tent city. Again, World War I is going on and we can't really address World War I without talking about people because people are always the greatest asset. Mothers send their sons, wives send their husbands into conflicts. Some of these people will come back alive. Some of them will die in the war. Others of them will remain wounded, which will affect them for the rest of their lives. So let me just talk a minute about people. Captain Robert Lamb, who commanded the Fayetteville Independent Light Infantry and earned the reputation as Fighting Bob Lamb, came back to Fayetteville and became the Fayetteville Police Chief following World War I. Corporal Robert Purcelli 
a young immigrant man who was living in Fayetteville with his family, joined the Army, and was killed in action when a German artillery shell exploded near him, becoming the first city resident killed in action. Lieutenant Daniel Byrd of Fayetteville went on to become a Brigadier General. Corporal John D. McFall of Hope Mills was killed in action at the Battle of Belcourt. Lieutenant Thomas Bulla, a Presbyterian minister, killed in action. Terry Lyon, a well-known local lawyer, served in the staff judge advocate, came back after the war, and was very prominent in the community. Lieutenant Henry Myrover, wounded during the Somme Offensive. Private John Gerald, a black man, active in the artillery during the First World War. Private First Class James Bishop, killed in action with artillery and machine gun fire. Sergeant Gordon Rose was gassed and later killed in action at the Hindenburg Line, receiving the Silver Star. Sergeant Brian Beckwith received the Distinguished Service Cross and promoted to Lieutenant. People that came back that we know very well, people like Noel Patton, who was associated with a generational photography business downtown. A lot of old Fayetteville families have portraits hanging on the wall that bear the photographic stamp of Noel Patton. He was an early tanker in those very primitive tanks at the beginning of World War I. And he received his Distinguished Service cr uh, Cross for going into no man's land and pulling back wounded soldiers uh, under German machine gun fire. People like J. Ross Jones, who came back and also became a Fayetteville police chief, and again, someone that had distinguished themselves during the war. During the time that there is fighting going on, Camp Bragg is getting established, and this was a big operation. The train would leave in the morning at the Atlantic Coastline Depot on Hay Street and travel out to Bragg with workers, all manner of workers that were helping to establish a new city at that time far removed from Fayetteville. And it's kind of hard to believe today our city limits go right up to um, Fort Bragg. Back then, you took the train out there and there was a lot of land in between. We didn't consider it uh, uh, a very close neighbor. There was also an Army airfield that was established out at Camp Bragg. And in 1919, a World War I aviator, former uh, World War I veteran, was flying to Camp Bragg. Uh, using landmarks. There was no navigation devices in those old um, Jenny biplanes. And he was traveling along the Cape Fear River when he ran short on gas and tried to make an emergency landing. His plane crashed into the Cape Fear River and both he and his co-pilot were killed. So the War Department in 1919 established the uh, airstrip out at Camp Bragg as Pope Field. So Pope Field gets its early start with a variety of different biplanes and procedures that today we kind of chuckle at when we hear them. For instance, when the biplanes came in for a landing at Pope Field, they had to buzz the field to scare off the deer so that they could make a successful landing. And of course, Pope Field would evolve. By 1921, in the post-war era, there was a drawdown, and they were looking at closing different military installations, and Camp Bragg was one of them. And immediately, there was an effort on the part of the commander out there, Brigadier General Albert Bowley, and people in the Fayetteville uh, community to, to save the post. So about a year later, uh, the post is saved, and in short time it goes from camp status to fort status. That's the 
kind of the uh, pivotal point of Camp Bragg to Fort Bragg. Uh, at that time, there were 70 officers and 1,700 enlisted men out at the, uh, out at the post. 